So we back with Ariana Johnson, and this is what the what's this third, fourth, fifth? What, which one is this one? The third one. The third one. All right. So, um, so what's been happening? How how things been going? Things been going pretty good for me recently. I got my first offer, and also I went homecoming queen with my grandma beside me, and it's just been really life is just been life and for real. We moved home a little sooner than we thought. Why, why is graduating from Wilson so important to you, though? Because it's the culture I always wanted to be in the parade for myself. Right. And then, like, four years ago when I was a freshman, I told my grandma I wanted to win homecoming queen. And so me and my cousin made this little thing. Like, she'll always run for, like, the class stuff, but I wanted to run for the big one. Like, the whole school got to vote for me. Right. And you won. I won. Bro, bro when, you, when, they, when they called your name, fam, you were so excited. I was so happy for you, man. That was dope. Yes, I was crying, like. The whole time we was walking, I got a little clip on my phone. Me and my grandma, we said like a little prayer before I went up there. And she was crying, clutching my arm. Clutching my arm the whole time we was walking. So it was just important to her as it was to you. And it was just a bunch of my family had came and supported me. Right. And my cousin, she's my favorite cousin, like my favorite, like, old cousin. I don't, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but her name I've never seen. And she came from Greenville. For sure. Let's see me win. For sure. Now... Uh, the homecoming man, how, bro, homecoming was kind of lit. Yeah, it was. Tell me, tell me a little bit about homecoming man, and I and I know so, you know we know um, about the game and all of that, but there's a lot of stuff surrounding Wilson homecoming that's always you know something to to be a part of. So talk about that a little bit. Actually, the crazy thing is, I was in the parade since I was like probably one. Right. Cause my grandma class eighty five. Okay. So I was always in a prayer. So I always, I used to stay in North Carolina. And so I, I always wanted to move back my 12th grade year to always graduate from Wilson. Yeah, I didn't go to Wilson, but, you know, I enjoy the culture of everything. I really think that Wilson impacts the entire Florence community. So yeah. at the, I went to the tailgate this year, and I saw you out there at the tailgate. And you was, you was lit. You was turned up. Yeah. Talk about the tailgate, man, and why that's such an important, like, a, a thing that a lot of, lot of y'all do here. The tailgate for us, I feel like the tailgate... It's for like people come finally coming back together, classmates. That's not just friends, but family. Cause that's how I look at. It. I don't look at it as like a tailgate, classmates. I look at it as a family reunion. And for me to finally be a part of that in a way by winning homecoming queen, I just I'm just enjoying the moment. Like I already with my class, we already setting up something for next year. <laughs> Y'all ain't even graduate yet. Y'all already set. graduate, but I just know I want to keep it going. Cause I see at the front. It's kind of dying down, so we need to pick it up in the other culture. For sure. All right, talk about the first offer. To the school, it was Warren Wilson. It was like in the mountains. So uh, they told me to come, and I already had asked them if I come, because it was four hour drive, like, was it a possibility? And it was like, absolutely. So I went down there, and then I got my first offer, and it was amazing. Is that, that near Asheville? I think so. Bro, that's a nice area, bro. Yeah, it For is. real, oh, that's dope. That's dope. How how was like the coaching staff and everything? Like, it was pretty. It was pretty fun. That's your, you know, your first offer. So of course you're looking for more opportunities. So mm -hmm. that's dope. How y'all gonna look this year though? So I'm gonna give y'all my four goals for. Well, I, I got five, five. So the first goal was to win homecoming queen, to get my offer. Then I had one to win state, and then prom. Then I get my car for graduation. So praying I get my car. <laughs> but I already knocked two off. I got three more to go. And state, I'm going to get state. I feel like I'm going to get state. I need another ring on my feet. So so my grandma Yvonne, as y'all know, she's been my rock, my everything. And, you know, she had me since three months old. And now she's going to talk about how she feels about me and how I was growing up and just the experience of having me as her child, taking a second chance with me. And she did a wonderful job. I hope y'all guys can see that as well. I'm Yvonne Gamble, Ariana's grandmother. She was the first granddaughter. Upon her arrival, I mean, like she stated before, when my daughter first was pregnant, I wasn't in a good place. My daughter wasn't in a good place. But by the grace of God, I figured out. I got up and I left and went to North Carolina, preparing myself 
for the arrival of my grandchild so my daughter could have a place to stay to take care of her granddaughter to take care of her child and I can be there for her and I did that went there went to Greenville North Carolina got a job got an apartment my daughter came up there for a little while it didn't work out she went back home my mother called me and said you need to get Ariana you know some you know she I need to get her so I ended up getting her she probably was about three months old at that time not knowing <laughs> I was getting myself straight because it was three months ago and she's 17 now and I still got her but so she you, so you, you've had her the whole time the whole time she's my child That's right. That's right. I mean my favorite quote is I might not carry her for nine months but I love her like I carry her for 10 months. And it was just, for a while, it was just her and me. Because my uncle stayed so far away, it was just her and me for a long time. But anyway, so I play, I'm a, I'm a persistent person and what I want, I want. And at that time, I wanted her in a Christian daycare because I wanted to start off right. I get another chance to do it all, to make it right this time. So I got her in Christian daycare. Um, it wasn't easy. I'm not going to say at two, three years old, it wasn't easy, you know. But I stayed persistent. And some of the teachers would come to me and they would tell me, it's not you. She got to get this right at two and three years old because they knew that I stayed involved. They knew that if I'm if something's going on, I'm there. They knew that I didn't just drop my child off at daycare at that time and just leave her there. They knew that I care, not just care about her, but care about trying to establish the right things in her head so she can have a chance in this world. They knew all this. So it, it progressive and it was a struggle. You know, it was a struggle. I mean, it was so much of a struggle when she got in elementary school. They called Miss Gamble. They said, take her down the road. Take her down the road and bring her back. Remember one time, I don't know what she did. She did something, but it was at the limit at this point. I went next door to my neighbor house. I said, I need you to keep her for a couple of hours. Cause I just need to get my head um, couple, cause I couldn't understand, you know. But anyway, long story short, fast forward. We end up moving back here, back here because like I said, my uncle stayed so far away from, Green from Greenville back to North Carolina. Cause she didn't know nothing about Florence. You know, she knew about Greenville. So we end up moving back here so I can have help as far as because I learned when when we was there, it was too many people had to keep her. I had to get somebody to keep her when they had had half days of school. I had to get somebody to keep her when um, to drop her off at school. I had to get somebody to keep her when there was no school. You know, it was too many people on hands with her and I just wasn't eased with that. I mean, I had a good job, don't get it twisted, but I just wasn't comfortable with, because I didn't know these people, you know, they was my uncle's family, don't get me wrong, but again, that's my child, and I want that safe, the best safety for her, even in somebody else's home. So I had to, um, it was just best that I come back home. I ended up coming back home, she ended up getting with, you know, you know, start hanging out with people, because I'm the type, she couldn't go nowhere. If you want to go outside, I'm sit outside while you play and ride your bicycle. That was the grandmama that I was. If you want to go, um, you couldn't go in nobody's house. You couldn't go in nobody's backyard. You couldn't do none of that. You can't do because if I can't see you, then you can't. Then I can't. You can't go nowhere. Yeah, you know that was me. So, um, but we ended up moving back here, and it was a struggle. 
It was, a, I'm not going to sit here and paint a picture. It was a struggle. And then, you know, she used to go and call people. My grandma won't let me do this. My grandma won't let me do that. But I didn't care. You know, I, they talked about me. I didn't care because I knew my child. I knew that if I let her, if I pull this hand, she's going to go this way. I knew that if I pull this hand, she was going to go this way. She was the girl that would go either way. If I didn't stay on her neck and, be, and kept being persistent with her, you know, it would have went the other way. So, and that's that's real talk. But anyway, um, fast forward again. My son came to me. He said, Ariana want to play basketball. What was it called? Um, city League, City Basketball. I ain't knew nothing about it. We, I mean, I watched it on TV, but okay. So I signed her up. It wasn't my best judgment. I want her to be a cheerleader. I ain't wasn't thinking about basketball. So um, I'm grooming her to be that, you know. So I signed her up. She went. And the girls her age, I love every last one of them to death, but the girls her age, that the group that she had to play in, they were more advanced. They knew basketball. And every last one of them could play basketball. Every last one of them. So here's, this, here, here's my child out here. She ain't no real ticket to this goal or ticket to that. <laughs> no, real talk. She ain't no rather go to this goal or that goal, but she was out there. So, you know, I watch, I watch. But um, at the end, my coach Ellaby, when it was over with, because she would run. She would hustle. She could hustle yeah. yeah, she would hustle. And that's what they saw in her. But at the end, he was like, whatever you do, don't take her out of basketball. Still ain't understood, but I heard him because I listened. Okay, what I do next? Talking to myself, talking to God. Where I go from here? Ain't no nobody really to talk to about this or what, what, what route to take with this, you know. So I started thinking, trying to figure out how do I make her better? How do I get her? Because I'm like, do, do you want to play? She said, yes, ma'am. So how do I get you here? So Craig Walker, I don't know how I reached out to him. But anyway, I reached out to him on Facebook. I have a child. And somebody said, you train. Can you meet? Can she be up there such such every Saturday morning? She'll be there. It was a headache with him, with her and him. They, cause she was hard headed, you know, very hard headed. She started. He started training her. That still wasn't good enough. So I don't know how I reached out to Coach Frank. So I reached out to him. She needs some more training, cause she still don't know nothing. So um, he said, you have to, you know, he stayed so far, there ain't no problem. I'll come out there. And he didn't, he, he did a more reputations, what, what you call it? What you, reputation, what you call them things? Well, fundamentals. He did a lot of fundamentals with her. So we did that for a while. Okay, here comes Summer League getting ready to start. They got an AAU team, but the, the team that she would have been able to play, they was already full up. So I called Coach Frank again. I want her to play AAU. How do we do that? He said, let me call, make some phone calls, call back. He said, I got a team she can play, but she got to go to Dillon every day. Are you willing to take her to Dillon? Have no problem with that. She get out of school, I pick her up. We get something to eat. We on our way to Dillon every day. We ain't no nobody. But then here's the competitive part of me, <laughs> cause see she still her head is still hard now. So it's one girl on there, real real good. I said you want it. I said you see her. I said if you want this, you gotta make yourself play. You gotta play your game. You know. And at that time, people started coming like the um. The guard, the um, the guards and stuff, you know, cause she started com getting more comfortable now. Cause like I say, she hustled. The hustle was there. It was the shooting part, but she could hustle. She could take that ball. You get what I'm saying? That was already in there, and that must be what Coach Ellaby saw. But anyway, he pulled us a couple. Of, um, the guards pulled us aside, and they, cause she had an attitude all the time too, getting kicked out of the game and stuff. He said. If we hard on you on that flow, it's because we see something in you. Don't take it the wrong way. Let us let us do what we got to do so we can bring it out to you. 
it went on. She kept on playing, you know, she kept on playing. And it, it, it began to progress. But again, she's hard headed. At this time, she in the seventh grade. The attitude is still there. Me still running out to the school house. All that's still there. That ain't going nowhere. Back and forth with the teacher. So I just kept telling her, you, if you want to play basketball, because she was like, you always threatening me about you going to take me off the team. And you know I like it. I said, I can't take you off the team. You take yourself off the team. But the first thing you're going to do is keep them grades up. In order to keep your grades up, your um, attitude going to come with that. That's the first thing you're going to do. I don't care about the rest of it. You know, so it was like I said, it was a challenger. We, but we got there, um, seventh grade. They won a, a, at Williams. They won a championship, and they won name and I don't know how long. You know, eighth grade. They wanted her to play for JV. So you know, we did that. The attitude was still there, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I ended up was getting ready to take her off. She done got, you know, like I say, she still haven't figured this out yet, you know. So, and I keep praying, you know, what what we doing? What we doing? Because, see, I'm the grandmama that'll go to school. You embarrass me, I'm going to embarrass you. I'm the grandmama that'll go to the games. You want to show out, I'm going to show out. But I'm also the grandmama. You want to go to um, a concert, I'm, I'm right there with you. If you want to go out of town for your birthday, I'm there with you. I'm that grandmama also because I'd rather take you than have somebody else take you because that way I'm hands-on and I know what's going on. I'm that grandmama. I ain't playing. But anyway, it got better. It, it did. It got whole, whole, you know, the attitude and everything. It got better, you know. Um, she says to this day here, she appreciate me being hard on her because I'm still hard. She, pre she appreciates that, you know, because now she understands the value of your GPA, the value of um, your credit, the value of want to have something in life, you know, um, what you got to do to get where you need to get to, because it ain't just about playing basketball. Your education comes first to me. Hey, so you got you to see yourself in her in some ways. I, I, I see it. That, like, listen to you talk, and you got to see yourself in her in some ways, right? I do. In what ways? Talk about it. <laughs> her or I hate it. Look, I was there. That's why, you know, like I say, you have to hear the story. I was given a chance with her. I didn't have a, I had my kids young. Um, you know, it's, a, it's stories behind, but I had my kids young. So I had another chance to try to make it right. You know, when I say make it right, make it right. You understand what I'm saying? There's nothing she don't know about life. At such a young age, there's nothing that I didn't already instill in her. So as she was growing up, it used to hurt me so bad because, you know, you know, the struggle, you know what we go through. You know what it's like. You know what it's like. You know what it's going to take to get you on the other side. So what what's the problem? I don't, you know, that used to bother me. What's the problem? Because I tell, I put everything in you. I instill everything in you. You know, but we're going to rewind this whole situation. Nobody believed in her. Basketball. Nobody. When I say nobody, we go to the games. It's always me sitting there by myself. Everybody talk about her. Because she... But you have to give a child a chance. But no, when I say nobody, if you, any games that she ever tell you about growing up, here come mama, grandmama, just me. Sometimes my cousin will come home, what you doing? Getting ready to go to the game. They might go then, but nobody believed in her. Then her god mama and her god daddy, they came aboard. Because you, if you look, you really see grown-ups at her game right. you understand what i'm saying now they're there but at the beginning that was hard that had to be hard on her that had to be hard and i used to tell her you know 
if you if this is what you want, change your attitude. If this is what you want, you you play your game. And you play your game to the best because the same that same girl that's starting, that can be you if that's what you want. But you gotta you gotta want this. Look at her now. I ain't bragging, but I'm just saying, if you want it, you go get it. If you're going to play, you play your best. If you're going to be out there, you be out there and you give them something to talk about. That's me. You understand what I'm saying? If you're going to do it, you do it and you do it right to the best you can do it. That's what you do. That's me. That's me. You don't give up, but you got to want it, though. If you want it, show them you want it. If you want a position, show them you want a five starting position. You sit on the bench if you choose to sit on that bench. It ain't, it, that's, that's, that's what you want to do. Because you don't have to sit on a bench if that's what you want to do. Now, did, did, you, did you go to Wilson? Did you, did you, Heck yeah. <laughs> what this thing say, 85. <laughs> and look, the ironic part is we, our class, best class, class of 85, shout out. But every year we have, we used to have um, per, in the car homecoming parades. She, I can't find the picture. You don't got no pictures in it. She's always, she's always on the floor. And she always told me, Mama, if we don't do nothing else, can we move back down here in my 12th grade year so um, I can graduate from Wilson? You understand what I'm saying? Because we never thought that we would come back home at this time, at that time. But, you know, she always said she wanted to move back here to um, the finish school. Mm -hmm. Say it's favoritism, all no, these the ones I love the most. I brought her two, three diamond chokers, cause she loved the choke.